Hi, I'm Michael Honigman. I'm owner and managing director of Jupiter Play and Leisure Limited. I'm delighted to be at Harwood's Adventurous Playground. So as you um, arrive um, at Harwood's Adventurous Playground, um, the first thing you see is the, the sand play um, area, um, which is this area as you enter um, the, the playground. Uh, but it always starts to open up as you travel through the, the playground. There's different routes um, that you can, you can take. Um, and particularly um, if you're a child and you start to um, discover things around every corner, there's a new um, experience um, and a choice of different ways to, to play. Um, whilst there are several um, key uh, elements of um, play structures, uh, there's a lot of really small, interesting um, play experiences as you go through, which takes you through um, different levels. Uh, so you can have a, an easy um, a route, you can have a more challenging route, you can have a route which, um, which goes through the, the trees and shrubbery um, as well. So um, a child gets to, to make these, uh, these choices um, and what's the uh, most exciting route for them on that particular day. What was really interesting um, about this was that the uh, local authority um, had a vision of what they wanted um, to, to see here. And they worked with um, Southern Green um, Landscape Architecture uh, to start to bring this to life. Uh, they brought us on board Jupiter Play as the play specialist um, to, to work on the, the project and really to bring um, these ideas um, to life and to see if we could um, produce um, equipment that really fit in with the, the landscaping on this site. What makes this site um, different from a traditional um, playground is the look and feel and the use of natural materials um, throughout the, um, the site. Um, you're able to experience lots of different um, textures, um, you're able to get in touch with um, much more natural components and actually get in amongst the, the landscape which is very unusual for a playground. Most playgrounds in the UK tend to be um, in an area, they're um, flat, um, they're usually uh, tarmac and rubber um, surfacing um, with a fence um, around them and they hold very little interest um, for kids or families um, that go to visit the site. So having a green um, infrastructure um, delivers nine times um, the value um, of the capital investment um, in an area. Um, this area is full of um, newly planted um, trees and grasses and um, plants, um, which really help with the experience um, that you feel within this um, landscaped playground. My name's Christina Corser, I'm the Head of Sales and Marketing at Jupiter Play, but I have a particular interest and passion and lead a lot of the inclusive play um, development within the company. I particularly love Harwood's Adventurous Play Space because it really, to me, captures everything that it should do for inclusive play. It's a space where regardless of your needs, ability, background, age, gender, this space really has something for everyone, but not just one choice, but a huge choice of um, play experiences. There's lots of fantastic pathways that really draw you through the site, but all the way through the site, there are little punctuations of sensory play. And you'll see as we go through the space, how there's something to engage what we call the six senses of inclusive play. So when we talk about the six senses of inclusive play, we talk about vestibular and proprioception, which is very much about engaging every child in movement and dynamic play. So we also need to think about the senses of um, visual sense, our hearing sense, the sense of touch and the sense of smell. And this 
It's a great way of doing that when you have a really good green infrastructure embedded in the design of your play space. When we can start using planting and trees, we start to be able to use textures, which are great for the touch, but also re using really lovely sensory planting. And although we're here in winter, the wonderful thing about this space is it really changes through the seasons and you start to see it changing in colour, so you get that real visual stimulation, but also you start to smell with the new planting and the new sensory sort of interjections through there that you really get that lovely wholesome um, visual and um, sensory integration in this play space. When we think about an inclusive place strategy, you really need to embed that at the beginning of the design process. It is the only way that it allows you to create a really fantastic space that really um, lends itself to all the different needs and abilities of different people. This space has been so well thought out. It's thought about that change of level and what we're doing here is giving every child an opportunity to experience height, no matter what their need or ability is. It enables them to have a journey through the space, but also choose their play experience. We're not telling children how to use this space. They can make those choices themselves, but what we're doing is giving them options. The sand play space obviously has a lovely um, situation and is a great way of engaging that sensory play that we've um, spoken about. It enables that sense of touch and is a lovely, soft, gentle way of bringing a child into a space without overwhelming them with all of the amazing, exciting, adventurous aspects to the rest of the play area. So often the play value um, from, a, from a site and use that you get from using natural materials like sand, etc., they're usually taken out because of the um, maintenance costs or perceived maintenance costs um, of these products. Um, but we find that putting um, more natural materials in um, has got a lower capital cost. It might have a, a slightly higher um, maintenance cost, but the play value um, is incredibly more um, than having um, a sterile um, environment. You'll also notice some other really lovely um, elements to the play space. The bespoke unit also has some really nice little sensory um, play elements, one of which is the torque tubes. I love the torque tubes, how one is situated on the actual huge element up here, so there's a child playing at height who can talk to maybe a friend that's passing by down at the bottom level, but also could be a stranger, and it's that lovely interaction between different children um, coming in and using that play space, making new bonds and shaping new futures. So whilst um, this site has a lot of catalogue um, standard um, equipment, um, many of them were designed bespokely um, for the site or to suit the, the changing in levels um, on the, the landscaping. So there's a whole variety of catalogue products and some natural features um, within here. Um, and there's some bespoke um, products and little changes that have been made really to, to suit uh, the brief um, of the, the client and the landscape architects here. The wonderful thing about this structure behind me, it's a bespoke design and it's been designed to really enable every single child to um, access this particular unit and challenge them at their own individual risk levels. We're really thinking about a family unit, one that might have a child with complex needs, but also a child, a sibling that um, also doesn't have any particular special needs, but really needs to be pushed in terms of their risk and challenge. This unit has been designed to really enable one child to go and really test their level of risk, going up to the tall tower and going down that big tube slide, versus a child who might need to take their time, may need some support from their parent or another sibling, and just access the heart of play without having to really be pushed to the risk limit. And that's the important thing when coming up with an inclusive strategy, is thinking about who it's catering to, not just those tokenistic elements that we often see in an inclusive playground strategy, where there's a few little elements added on after. This is really thinking about that family unit, those children, who are they playing with and how are they playing with them? This has all been carefully considered within this design. So what you'll notice as we tour uh, this playground is the, um, the size and scale um, of the Robinia product that we, um, that we use. Uh, this is because um, we use really mature um, timbers 
and the process is different also. Uh, so we leave the timbers to, to rest um, for a minimum um, of three years. And that way um, we find out um, whether they're going to pop um, open as almost half of the product does and we can only use the, those products um, for decorative elements, we never use them for structural elements. So all of the structural elements have been left for three years and we're sure that they're not going to split at that, um, at that stage. We believe this is one of the most interesting um, and exciting playgrounds in the country.